how to get a woman to want you badly even if she wasn't interested at first. So you all have women out there that you're probably interested in. Okay, maybe you got a big crush on somebody. It could be a woman who's got hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram, or it could be the girl next door, someone that you know who's like just a normal girl. Both of those women are gonna have guys that they absolutely are thinking about all the time. And they have other guys who they go on a date with and then they forget about as soon as the date ends. Now, one of the things that you have to understand is that if you want a woman to want you badly, to be obsessed with you, then what you need to do is you cannot be obsessed with them. If you want them so badly and you're craving them and you're thinking about it, like it's probably, you're probably not gonna get that reciprocated towards you. And that's the first principle that I'm gonna talk about. Um, but first, before I go into that, is I'm gonna illustrate this because I know sometimes guys, when they see this, they're gonna, it's, it sounds kind of confusing. If you really want somebody badly, why is it they can't want you badly back? That would be perfect, right? I'll explain. So one time, my buddy, he created one of the best Tinder profiles I'd ever seen in my life. It was getting him thousands of matches, and I'm not joking, thousands of matches of women who wanted to have sex with him on the first date. These were women they were hitting up literally for sex. The profile had a bunch of pictures of him in cool environments, and then, you know, he had his shirt off, he had muscles, um, but what really separated him from everybody else was his caption. His caption was, <laughs> it was hilarious. It basically read, I know you're probably tired of swiping on tons of mediocre guys that are just not worth your time. But if you're looking for a man who knows how to treat you like a woman and knows how to be that dominant force in your life, then swipe right and we'll talk. I'm probably messing up what the caption said, but it said something like that. It was like, he used to write copy, so it was, you know, very like, <laughs> it was like the perfect copy for a dating profile for Tinder. Anyway, he's getting thousands of matches. One of the matches that he gets is this super attractive girl. She's freaking hot. Okay, smoke show. Goes on a date with this girl, ends up taking her out to like some bar or something like that. And as soon as she gets there, she's like, you know, got her hand all over him. She's like touching him and stuff. And uh, then, you know, he's like really focused on her too. And then he takes her to another bar. He's like pulling her in, like trying to make out with her. And like they're making out a bunch. Uh, and then they go to some other place and, you know, he's still doing the same thing and she's touching him. And, and by the end of the date, you know, he's like trying to go back to her place. And she's like, yeah, you know, like we could do that, but why don't we just do that next time? And he's like, oh, no, why we should do it now. Like, it's like what's wrong with now? I'm here. And he, she's like, I just, I don't know. Like, I, I really think we should do it next time. Anyway, so they hug, kiss, and uh, he never hears from her again. Okay, how many of you listening to this, does that sound familiar to you? That's one thing that happened. High interest, way down here to low interest after the date. So what happened there? Well, it illustrates the point that I'm talking about, which is you cannot be obsessed with the person that you're doing this with. If you want someone to really want you badly, you can't be obsessing and really wanting them. Because what that shows is that shows that you need it. On the date, he was trying too hard. He was so stoked when he got that match. I mean, he was like pulling her in, trying to make out with her all the time. He was totally focused on her the whole time. And what that told her was that, hey, maybe this isn't the guy that I thought I was gonna go on a date with. He had talked himself up to here, and it turns out he wasn't actually at that level. And she was disappointed, she left. And you know, unfortunately, that that's, uh, that's how that day ended up. But let's talk about another story, which illustrates my second point, which is what you got to do. And that's, you got to learn to be focused on your thing. Put yourself first, make sure that you're on your own path. And at a micro level, that means you can create fun within the date without having to focus on her. If you make her the fun of the date, then she's not going to have a good time. To illustrate this point, I'm going to give you a story again with this guy. So we went on a double date, me and him, with two girls. At the time, I had just started talking to my current girlfriend. So I wasn't really in the market for somebody, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to go on a date and kind of see what happens. Um, I'll support my buddy. And basically, we went on this date, and we went to this arcade place here in Austin. They both come in. They're both super attractive. And we start playing this uh, basketball game. We're laughing. We're joking around. I'm like, you know, at first, the, when the girl came in, she was like, not really that into me. You know, she was like, kind of looking around. She was nice. She was, um, she was kind, but you know, she was, and I could tell she wasn't really sold yet. Anyway, we keep playing uh, all of our games and stuff like that. And what ended up happening was slowly but surely, as I'm having a great time, she starts kind of coming closer to me. She starts asking me more questions. Hey, where are you from? Oh, cool. What do you do? 
Uh, and I'm like, you know, I, I help guys out with dating and stuff. And I keep, keep throwing the basketball. She's like, oh, well, like, that's so crazy. Like, you know, how did you get into that? And, um, and I was like, you know what's funny about that? Um, I was coaching this guy the other day. He does like finance stuff. And he was really wanting to break up with the current relationship that he was in and move on to a new relationship. And he wanted to move on to this new relationship while he was in this current one. So I caught this guy who I was having a conversation with him last week. And I'm like, how am I gonna do this? Well, three months later, we had engineered everything and he's now currently dating that girl and he's disappointed with the new girl that he got. Like he's still saying there's something missing. Uh, so I try to help people out, but sometimes, you know, not everybody is, uh, you know, fully capable of being able to enjoy the, you know, what's, what's going on with them. And I told her this story, didn't tell her anything else about what I did. Obviously I love details out about the, the guy. I never talk about, you know, details, uh, specific details about my clients. And so she was even more intrigued after that. Anyway, so like she gives me her phone number and um, you know, I texted her just saying, hey, had a good time, you know, hope you got home safe. And, and that was really all I intended to say, but you know, then she kept sending me messages and you know, she was like texting me more and more, wanted to meet up again. And you know, we met up as friends after that. And to this day, we're still friends. And she still hits me up. Uh, but it was very clear that after that date, she was down here and then ended up up here. And funny enough, my buddy who had had such a bad date the first time, his date, which you know started out kind of like lukewarm, ended up even higher. He ended up uh, hooking up with that girl for you know a few months. You know she didn't stay as obsessed with uh, with him as as my girl was, but um, that's that's how that ended up. What was the difference? The difference there was that we were so focused on having a good time with a date that we didn't really have time to be making the fun them. We created the fun within the date with ourselves, and we brought them in. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to have a double date, but this is an example of how that could happen, okay? If you're so focused on having a great date, and this is like the highlight of your week, and you're trying to make this work, what that's gonna do is it's gonna put intense pressure on you, you're gonna focus way too much on her, and she's gonna get pushed away. And if she wasn't interested at first, she will stay uninterested. Even if she was really, really interested up here, the fact that you put so much attention on her indicates that you're lacking something. Women do not wanna get with a guy who's lacking a life that they wanna be a part of. They wanna get with a guy who's already got an amazing life, and they can complement that life. But if you don't have an amazing life, she knows how amazing she is. <laughs> like, she's not as great as you guys think. Because if you put her on the pedestal, then she knows that, okay, well maybe his life isn't really all that amazing. I probably shouldn't be a part of it. I should probably be a part of another guy's life who has a better life. And so that's what's going on in their heads when that happens. So again, you cannot allow that person to be the focal point of what it is you're trying to do. You and the fun that you create and the life that you're living has to be that. And, and the date is a microcosm, is an example of that. Number three is you gotta be patient. Too often, and when I talk about the first example, he couldn't, like she couldn't wait, you know, to touch him and stuff like that, but he was also eager too. When we went on that second date, we were both much more measured. It's in a group setting, you tend to be much more measured just by happenstance. But for me personally, I was measured because I wasn't really looking to date this person. I, was, I already had a girl that I was talking to and I didn't want to mess things up with that. And so ironically, by me being less available, she was into me even more. You can do this on a date. Too many of you guys are rushing to make out with the chick or feel like you have to kiss her or have to do X, Y, Z on this date to make sure it goes well because you're so paranoid. If you don't do it, she's not gonna text you back. But ironically, by you doing this, you've assured that she won't. Women take longer to feel intense attraction for a guy. For them to want you badly, it usually takes time. It doesn't happen the instant she sees you. She's like, oh my God, I'm obsessed with him. It usually happens. Maybe she thinks you're attractive at the beginning or even if she's not attractive at the beginning, she can see you over time and then slowly develop feelings for you and that feeling can turn into her wanting you badly, into an obsession, into something that is like she's thinking about at night and craving for. But it doesn't happen, it takes time. And too many guys want that instant thing because us as guys, when we see a woman that we're into, we're like, oh my God, this person's amazing. Like, you know, I have to find a way to date her or have sex with her. Women, they don't think like that as much. You know, they like to, <laughs> if it, even even if it's on social media or a celebrity, they usually see a bunch of interviews with the guy or stalk his social media page and see interviews. Like they do all of that stuff and then they become obsessed with him. Okay, it's not, it doesn't just happen visually. So what this means on the date is that you gotta stop being so eager for everything. 
Ironically, if you let the sex come to you, it'll happen much easier and it'll last longer. So like, don't put that pressure on yourself to like try and hook up on the date, especially if it's the first one. If you're desperate for it to happen, if you're really trying to speed run this date, then it probably won't. And number four, the last thing is to have a bit of mystery to yourself. I don't know if you noticed, but that story that I told, which by the way, was terrible story. Um, I, I told it much better on the date. When I was telling that story, I only told her about a small snapshot of what it is that I do. If I had been a guy who basically was telling her this story, oh yeah, I work with like, you know, I have uh, hundreds of thousands of people follow me, you know, I work with investment bankers, you know, I'm like, uh, you know, I do tons of guys who are also like tech entrepreneurs, I, I do coach a lot of rich guys, you know, I'm listing all the people down like bragging, like she would have been like, she would have rolled her eyes and been instantly uninterested in me. Well, not only does that sound tacky, but you're listing things. When you tell a story, when you tell him a little, like a little snapshot of what it is that you do and you leave the rest up to her imagination, it's so much more powerful. Like if I'm talking about my travels, I'm not gonna list every place that I've traveled to and then you know just try and humble brag the entire time. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to give her one story. I'm gonna give her one story about that time that my bike broke down because I hit a herd of cows in Cambodia and had to crash in a village. One story. I didn't list, oh yeah, I went to Thailand, I went to Bangkok, you know, I went to Cambodia, Laos, India. If I start listing, you're already bored. People tell their whole life story on a date. Don't do that. Give her a snapshot, a tiny snapshot into your life. And stories are the best way to do that. What that's gonna do is she's gonna be engrossed in that one story. She's like, wow, that was just one thing that happened. Like, you know, I wonder what else he's done. And so now she's imagining and she's, you know, when people fill in the blanks, it tends to be a lot more fantastical than what the reality is. But um, that's how you get some people obsessed with you as you do that sort of stuff. Those are the four steps, you guys. Make sure that you're not obsessed with that person because if you're obsessed and you want them super badly, then that means it's probably not gonna happen. The way you are not gonna be so obsessed with that person and start getting, um, you know, these, needy feelings is by you being into something else more. And that thing should be yourself and the life that you're creating. In a date, that's you creating fun and you're bringing her into the fun. You're not making her the fun and solely focusing on her. Number three is gonna be to be more patient when you're on the date. Don't rush for sex, don't rush to make her like you. Any of that kind of stuff is gonna push her away. And number four is to leave mystery, okay? Give her a snapshot of your life. Do not give her the whole thing. That is gonna cause a lot of feelings of obsession to blossom. It's like, a, it's like a seed. You plant the seed and you allow it to grow. Those four things, you guys, are what I want you to start doing to make women really, really into you. Now, if you wanna get those four things in your life, what I want you to do is click the link down below at getcoachedbyloyd.com. I walk guys through this every single day taking guys who had no women who were thinking about them badly, which is where most guys are, let's be real, and taking them to that guy, the top 10 or 1% of guys where they have tons of women who are thinking about them and obsessed with them, okay? So like that's the kind of thing that you wanna start doing in your own life. I teach you how to create this life, I teach you how to create the skills within yourself to make yourself into that person that has that with a variety of different women so you can pick the woman, your dream woman, that is going to be the right one for you. So click that link and also if you wanna join a community of like-minded guys, find people in your area to be your wingman, to network with. There's also my school group down below. I also post a lot of content there, it's free. So if you wanna ask a question, you can do that there too. Thank you so much, you guys. Good luck out there.